I'm Chris Duke, and this is Motors. Welcome to Motors. Today we've got a special guest star in the shop. It's David Wheeler from Hellwood Products. He came down from Visalia, California to help us install these front and rear sway bars on our project truck, Ford F-150. Welcome to the show, David. Hey, Chris. You want to talk about sway bars for a little bit? Sure. Right on. Let's do it. So, David, what exactly is a sway bar and how does it work? A sway bar is essentially a torsion bar. Okay. And it doesn't come into play until the vehicle tries to take a corner. When the body tries to roll, the sway bar pushes back against the body, keeping the vehicle flatter and improving handling performance. There's a lot of other manufacturers out there that make sway bars. How does Hellwig's products differ from them? Hellwig is the only manufacturer in the aftermarket making a heat-treated 4140 chromoly steel sway bar. What that means to the end user is that a heat-treated bar is 50% stronger in fatigue strength than a non-heat-treated bar. And that means that this sway bar is going to handle a lot more abuse and right. not fail in a demanding application. So David, we've got our project vehicle here. It's a Ford F-150. It's been lifted up six inches and it's on 35s. Once we put the front and the rear sway bars on this thing, what kind of differences can we expect to see? The front bar is going to be an eighth of an inch upsize over the stock bar. Okay. The front bar is going to be inch and seven sixteenths, which is about a 30% improvement in roll stiffness over the factory bar. The rear bar is a one inch diameter bar, which is going to be 100% improvement over what's on there, which is nothing. So we're adding a rear sway bar upsizing the front sway bar, which means the vehicle is going to stay flatter in the turns, easier to control, mm -hmm. and better performance under towing and under loads. Cool, looking forward to that. And so, what other products does Helg make and what kind of vehicles? Well, we make sway bars for a variety of vehicles. We make sway bars for golf carts, to muscle wow. cars, to trucks, to motorhomes, and even class 8 vehicles. Wow. So we make sway bars in diameters from 5 eighths of an inch all the way to 2 and 3 eighths of an inch. And so we cover the full spectrum of uh, vehicles out there. So David, we've got everything laid out here on our table. Tell us what we're looking at. Okay. We've just got the basics here for discussion. What we have here is saddles. These will allow the sway bar to be mounted onto the axle. The saddles are attached with U-bolts that go around the axle through the holes in the saddle. The sway bar is attached to the saddle by putting a U-plate over the bushing. And then the sway bar is mounted to the saddle, which is mounted to the axle. To attach the sway bar to the frame, we have our heavy duty adjustable end links. Since mm -hmm. this is a lifted application, we will need a longer end link. Okay. These are adjustable in three inch increments and they can be mounted to the clevis that's bolted onto the sway bar. Okay, cool. Sounds pretty heavy duty. Let's take a look at the, what tools we need to get this thing onto the truck. Okay. Sway bar can be installed with basic hand tools, a couple of end wrenches in 9 16 and 5 8 an adjustable wrench, a few sockets here. We have 5 8 11 16 and 3 quarters, a ratchet, a six inch and a three inch extension, and a torque wrench, which is preferable for torquing the U-bolts to the proper torque. All right, right on. Let's get with the installation then. Okay. Now, since we've got David here from Hellwig, he's going to show us how to get these bushings into the end links, and there's a technique. I'm just going to take it over and show you how to do it. David? Okay. What we're going to do is press the bushing into the loop of the end link. What I like to do for installation is put the grease around the corner on this raised section of the hourglass bushing. So I put the grease on the raised section, and what this do, does is eases the installation of the bushing into the loop. Also, by putting on the edge here, it's gonna be wiped into the center where it's actually gonna stay in the loop. So after putting the grease on, set the bushing on the table, place the loop of the end link over the bushing, and press down firmly. That pushes the bushing into the loop, and then you can tap it in the rest of the way. Next step is to apply some lube to the sleeve to ease the install. Place the sleeve into the center of the bushing and tap it home with a hammer. And you're done. Repeat for each end of the end link. We're going to start back here with the rear axle and this vent tube needs to come off so we can put this washer underneath it. That's going to give you enough clearance underneath this for the U-bolt.
Next, we need to install this U-bolt in a saddle bracket over the cross member for the spare tire. The Hellwig recommends that you remove the spare tire first for ease of installation. The other thing that we needed to do is, since the exhaust on this truck is aftermarket, we needed to remove it from here for ease of installation. What we're going to have to do later is rework the exhaust to get around the sway bar once it's all installed. Attach the end link to the saddle bracket using the provided hardware. Just finger tighten for now. Loop the U-bolts over the rear axle. Watch out for brake lines and anything else that might be in the way. Attach the sway bar to the end links using the provided bolt. There it goes. Attach the saddle bracket to the U-bolt. And swing your sway bar up. Attach that to the saddle bracket. Now once you've centered the bar, you can start tightening things up with a three-quarter inch deep socket. After you've hand tightened everything, you want to torque it down with a torque wrench. This gets torqued down to 30 foot-pounds, these here are 40 foot-pounds, and these over here are 60. Now that we've got the rear sway bar all installed, it's time to turn our attention to the front of the truck here. We're going to start by removing the front sway bar from the stock end links. Now we've got the bolts removed from the front sway bar, it's time to take the sway bar down. So here's our stock sway bar from Ford. We'll compare that next to the Hellwig, which is an eighth of an inch thicker. Now once we put the lubricant inside the bushing, we just slide that onto the front sway bar. And then slide the U-plate over the bushing. and then connect these U-plates to the factory hardware. And finally, for the front sway bar, tighten down the front end links. We took a look at reattaching the tailpipe back up to the truck, but because the sway bar is now in the way, it won't work. So we're going to have to take this to a muffler shop and have them do some customization on it. Demonstrating the effectiveness of a sway bar in a vehicle through video is very difficult, but we used our equipment on our F-150 through a slalom test drive at 30 miles per hour using half steering wheel turns back and forth. The video on the top shows the stock truck, while the video on the bottom shows the truck after the Hellwig sway bars have been installed. Now here are the same two clips displayed side by side for a different perspective, slowed down by 50%. Now I'm going to slow it down again by another 25% and then freeze it on this frame right here to show you the amount of travel and the leaning to the right is much more significant with the stock vehicle and you can see that in the bed of the truck. For a completely different video perspective, we mounted a camera on the passenger side door aimed at the right front tire. If you use the chrome part of the bumper as a guide, you can see that there's much more travel on the stock truck. Now in case you missed it, I'll show that video again by slowing it down to 50% and I'm going to stop it right here and draw a green line on the screen that shows you the most dramatic difference in wheel travel. Well, David, thanks for coming all the way down from Visalia, California to help us install our sway bars on our project truck. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. It's fun. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> all right, for more information on Hellwig products, go to hellwigproducts.com. And for more of our videos, go to motors.tv. And please be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Apple iTunes. Hey, Chris. Thanks for coming down from Visalia. We want... Oh, <laughs> right at the end. At okay. that point, the body is going to try and roll. And the sway bar is going. <laughs> <laughs> the front sway bar is going to be upside about an inch and an eight, or eight and an eight. So, David, we've got everything here laid out on our table. Tell us what was. Who? 
rear thingy here. That thing. Bolt cowbell. Next, we need to install the U-bolt. The U-bolt. Right. Damn. <laughs> Yeehaw! I don't need air tools. Well, thanks, David, for coming all the way down from Visalia, Cali. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and put a little bit more grease right in here. Motors. It's quite a workout. Zoot.